Hello, uh, greetings on the occasion of the World Asthma Day. I am uh, Dr. Satyanarayana Mysore, uh, interventional pulmonologist and uh, sleep medicine specialist. Since the year uh, 1998, we have been having uh, the annual event of World Asthma Day. At each year, this is a theme to celebrate and work on the goals of the theme. This year, the theme of the World Asthma Day is uh, STOP. And when we mean what we mean by STOP is S stands for Symptom Evaluation. What are the subjective complaints that patients come with? One has to pay meticulous attention to what the patient is complaining of and their symptoms. The second is to test response, give medications. Suppose there is cough, suppose there is breathlessness, tightness in the chest. These things need to be addressed and O stands for observation. So have a follow up with the patient, observe and assess how they are uh, uh, faring well in the progress of control of asthma. The last one is the P and the P stands for proceed to adjust the treatment. I would like to share with you all on uh, two important aspects. One is the aspect of the myths, the do's and don'ts of asthma and secondly the newer developments in asthma. There is a reason why I would like to share the myths. Every day if I see about 20 asthmatics in my clinic, I find that in majority of patients, there are a set of firm beliefs. These beliefs may be based from the internet search or beliefs that have been shared to them by their well-wishers, friends or relatives. There has to be a rational understanding of these uh, things for a proper control of asthma. The number one myth that we see is, Doctor, can my asthma be cured? Is there a permanent cure that you can provide? Asthma is a chronic disease. Symptoms may be there at times, symptoms may not be there at all times. So lack of symptoms does not mean that there is no asthma. Usually children who develop asthma at a very young age outgrow the symptoms but not the disease. So by the ages of 18 to 24 we may see that the symptoms are to the bare minimum and that may mislead about uh, them why should I use the medication anymore. That is a myth uh, that is very firmly there in the community. The second one and the largest one is that uh, inhalers. Um, I don't want to use inhalers. I think I will get addicted to it. I may have to use it for lifelong or long term. Now we have to understand the firm difference between a tablet and an inhaler. A tablet has to be taken. It's usually you know, much more bigger dose than what uh, the drug is delivered through an inhaler. It goes to the stomach, gets into blood circulation, visits all the other organs which it does not have to, then comes to the lung. In case of an inhaler, it is one hundredth of the oral medication, very tiny weeny dose that is mixed with a whiff of pressurized air and that is what you take directly into your lung. Side effects whatever are minimal and negligible. When you put the risk versus the benefit, I think most doctors would recommend inhalers, rotahalers and other forms of treatment once the diagnosis is confirmed. Spirometry or lung function test is widely available. We at Manipal do have further improved diagnostic um, skill sets. We do have cardiopulmonary exercise testing. 
when a normal lung function does not confirm or refute the diagnosis of asthma when the clinical symptoms are not that consistent but you do have a fear that yes there could be a little bit of asthma that is not obvious we can do what is known as cardiopulmonary exercise testing asthma protocol and that can show that the airway gets tightened the airway smooth muscles get into spasm um, so this is the range of uh, uh, improved diagnostics every patient of asthma is recommended to have a spirometry done or a lung function test done to confirm the diagnosis and on the follow it needs to be measured to see how well the disease is controlled myth number 3 is an extra emphasis on diet people tend to associate food as warm cold hot and then you know impose self impose restrictions on dietary products which may not be rec rec recommended or necessary in most of the cases these are some of the myths that i wanted to share with you all coming to the other important uh, aspect new treatments in asthma asthma has uh, four different severities and treatment response uh, based on the treatment uh, response the medications are added or subtracted brought to a minimal lack of symptoms as i earlier said does not mean absence of disease a small dose of inhaled medication may be required to prevent what we call as airway remodeling so to keep the airway free from inflammation and permanent changes or long standing changes a little bit of medication may be required so medications can be broadly put into two categories preventers that is those medications which prevent asthma relievers those that relieve the symptoms relievers on their own is not advised as per the current uh, gina guidelines which is global initiative for asthma control coming to the newer modalities of treatment we at manipal we are passionate to bring the best to our patients and we do have a center established for biologics till date in our country we had uh, Uh, criteria for using which patient should receive these new drugs called biologics they are costly just because they are costly that doesn't mean they are the best it has to be considered only after thorough medical evaluation risk and benefits and the cost is all clearly discussed with the patient patient in question now we had this drug called omelizumab and we do have it but then exciting newer molecules are coming into india we will be looking forward to having uh, a drug called nepolizumab we also are looking towards a drug called bendralizumab and these drugs may turn out to be game changers as far as interventions for asthma the most important intervention in asthma is basically very very simple tool every time the patient comes to me i would suggest that the inhaler technique is changed and check if the technique is ineffective if there is problems with synchronizing the hand to mouth coordination the drug is not delivered to the lung and the asthma control remains poor so this is a low cost initiative that everyone involved in treatment of asthma should do manipal has trained respiratory nurses in the outpatient areas who are well trained to check and assess the correct inhaler technique coming to the newer devices we have what we call as bronchial thermoplasty bronchial thermoplasty is a tool in which bronchoscopy or a camera is inserted into the lung and once you assess 
the smooth muscles of the lung you use thermal heat to thin the smooth muscles therefore the airway muscle cannot get into repeated spasm however this is not offered to every patient up front this kind of intervention remains the last resort in establishing a firm control doing bronchial thermoplasty does not mean freedom from drugs patients do need to be on drug but maybe at a very minimal dosage all in all i am glad that i have had this opportunity to share with you all about the common myths in asthma the theme for the 2019 word asthma and thirdly the newer developments and devices let us all work towards you know increasing the asthma awareness making the treatment accessible and in tune with the manipal philosophy let us make the asthma care affordable as well but not compromising on what the latest that we have to offer to you all thank you